right, cool. Okay, uh, welcome guys to Junior Coding Week 10. Uh, as we said, this is the last lesson of the term. So hope you, hope you guys have fun. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, if you want to ask any questions about like the whole course at the end, just uh, ask me then. But uh, now I'm going to go through the content. So as usual, um, I'm going to go to repliet.com. Um, I'll just link that in the um, chat again. Okay, so just log in. I'm already logged in and once you do, um, just create a new REPL. Python, of course. And I'm going to call this one a Junior Coding uh, Week 10 uh, class. Okay, um, so last lesson I introduced you guys to the if statement. So if you remember, like, yeah, Python has an if statement kind of like Scratch does where it allows you to like do different things based on um, different conditions. Um, yeah, I'll just remind you guys of what like a standard if statement looks like now. So So how an if statement works is basically like you have, um, I don't know, like um, for example, so you have like a number variable like x, you have like if x like is equal to two, you know, do something. Then you have like else if, it's got like elif, you can have as many of these as you like with like a bunch of other conditions as well. Like you'd be like, if, else if x equals three, if x is three. So this is basically how an if statement works. You don't need to retype this if you like already get it. I'm just kind of <laughs> trying to remind you guys of how if statements work. So basically, yeah, you have if, which is like the main first conditional and this code block gets um gets done if x is two this one gets executed if x equals three and if it doesn't match any of these it will go to what's in the else block oh by the way i think uh Nick, or whoever, um, just like raise your hand via Zoom if you have any questions that you want to like ask me. Anyway, so that's how if semis works. So I'm going to show you guys um, uh, how another thing works. You know how, you know how, um, so in Scratch, we have like this thing called like an ask block where um, you can use it to like ask essentially the user or yourself some questions. Like, you know, um, you could get Scratch to ask you like a character in Scratch to ask you like, what's your name? And then you can answer back whatever your name is and we'll like be able to like use that answer or like repeat it back to you. Like Python has something similar. It's not called an ask block. It's called um, like a, the input function. So input, I-N-P-U-T with these brackets. I'll show you how this works in a second. So here we have, um, let's say, so you can assign the, I'll show you how this works first. So basically, if you want to do something similar to what we did in Scratch when we had like the character like ask you your name, uh, we have to do this like name equals and then input and then in here in between these brackets you put like a, a quoted string that says like um basically whatever question that you want to like ask the user so in this case it'll be like what is your name right and then whatever the answer is 
the variable called name will become equal to whatever the user put. So I'll show you how this works. Um, so I'll click run. So it asks you what your name, what your name is, and um, you type the answer. So in this console, like this is your like code editor, you type your name in the console. See so when I click on this, this square goes goes blank like this, and when I click into here, it turns white. So when it yeah, when it's white, that means that your cursor is there. So you can just type stuff. So here you type in like what your name is. So I'll type in my name, Vanessa. Then when I press enter, so after you finish typing your answer, you just press the enter on your keyboard like this. And yeah, and then it'll like keep going because I don't, it stopped there because I don't have any lines after this. I'll get to like repeat, like whatever your name is back to it. I'll just say like, hi. Um, Uh, like this. So I'll run this again. So it'll ask you the question, whatever question you put in these brackets, it will ask you that. You type in next to it your answer. Make sure you click on the console and then it'll, and then you can do anything with, the answer will be assigned to whatever variable you put here. And then you can use that variable, like you can print it out or do other stuff with it as well. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Um, all right, I know, uh, Nick, is that your name? Hello. Oh, do you have a microphone? I can't really hear you. Still can't really hear you. You can just talk. Okay. Which I can't, still can't hear you. I can only hear typing noises. Um, Okay, sure. Anyway, um, so, okay. Um, have you done this class before, Nick? Okay, if you've never done this class before and you want to sort of follow along with what I'm doing, just like go to this website, I'll just link it in chat. It's like repelit.com and um, basically you like, if you don't have an account already, you create an account, you, there'll be like a login screen on like the top right here. And then after you log in, you just like click this blue plus sign. Um, this is to create like a new REPL, which is like a new project. And then you like under templates here, you select Python and then you name your project, whatever you like. And then you click create REPL here. And then you should uh, end up getting like a code editor that looks like this, except blank. And then you can just sort of follow along with what I'm doing. That makes sense. All right, uh, I think I'll move on now. Does anyone else have any questions about what I've shown so far? Like the input function makes sense? It's basically like the ask block in um, in Scratch. All right, so yeah, basically if we've used our input function, so we worked out you can have the user provide input through like the console. And what we're going to do next is we're gonna make, um, so I reminded you guys what if statements were because we're going to now make something that uses the answer and then instead of just printing printing it out, it just it uses it in an in an if statement. So we're going to make like a calculator. So first of all, um, so say so we uh, when you have a calculator, right? Um, you get to choose like I don't know what two numbers you're going to do things to, and you get to choose what operation 
like it does to the numbers, whether that's like, you know, addition, like plus, you know, subtraction, minus, or like division, multiplication, that kind of thing. So we're going to make a calculator where the user selects like two numbers and also um, what operation should be done to them. And we're gonna do different things with the numbers depending on, yeah, what operator they select. So I'll show you guys how this works. So let's say, Uh, last thing I'm gonna do here is like I am a calculator just to show the use that this thing is a calculator. Say, then I'm gonna say select an operation. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell the user the option. So say one is for addition. Um, Two is for subtraction. Uh, three is for multiplication. And four is for division. I remember in Python, uh, we don't really have like the full division sign. So we just use slash and we don't really have the cross sign. So we use like an asterisk normally. All right, and then I'm going to ask the user to pick a number. I'm going to say um, operation, because remember you assign to a variable whatever the result of asking the user is. So operation equals um, inputs. And I'm just going to like repeat back what the operation you selected was. Yeah. Okay, so let's run this. So it prints all this stuff. And uh, yeah, now I can pick a number from like one to four. And then whatever I pick, it'll tell me what my number is. Cool. So now, um, yeah, we're not. Oh, and there's another extra step uh, you'll need actually. Um, I'll tell you. So you need to actually put like, int around this like outside of this stuff you need int bracket bracket here um the reason you need this is that you need to convert input into an integer or like a number um because the by default um the results you get from using the input function are always strings so they are always like text like you know letters words and stuff so even if you type in a number, it will actually interpret that as like a string instead, which is a bit awkward when you like you expect like certain numbers. Like if I didn't do this, so if I got rid of int, um, then I'll show you what happens. So I'll do an if statement. It's like if operation equals three, print operation is three, right? So I'll just run this. Um, so it is three. Okay, it does actually work here. Oh no, it doesn't work because um, it gets up to here, right? It says your operation number is three, but it doesn't get down to here. It doesn't actually print just operation is three. And yeah, the reason that like it doesn't actually register like um, this as being the number three is because, as I said, input turns everything you give it, you write to it as text, as strings. So if I do this, it will actually, if I put quotes around this three, it'll work. Um, this works, but yeah. So if you want it to like do 
make this work, you need to actually convert it the out. You need to convert like the number that you type into an integer using the int function. So int everything inside here gets turned into an int, like a whole number. Okay, so now this should work. Okay, so yeah, operation is now the number three and not the string three. That makes sense. Okay, so um, yeah, that was just a demonstration of why you need this int in front of like to convert the input to a number whenever you're expecting it to be a number. So now we have an operation, so you can choose addition, subtraction, whatever. We need to have the user pick the two numbers to add or subtract or do whatever to. So for that, um, we need to use, so now we need to, yeah, grab the two numbers. So I'll just call the first number num1 and then use inputs. Um, use your first number. And then num2, oops, remember these uh, variable names need to be like all one word, so you can't put a space between them. Um, Oh, so now I have all these. Oh, and because these are both numbers, you also need to do the int thing in front of these two. So int left bracket and at the end of the line as well, like this. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Or do you need me to slow down a bit? Or... Yeah, you are good. Okay. Anyway, um, so now I have the two numbers. So now, um, so basically, um, if if the um, operation was division, you know, you want the answer to be like, if you want to print the answer, and you want the answer. So say if the answer was like, um, you know, just if the user picked number one, which is addition, then the answer would be, yeah, sit down a bit. Okay. Right. I'll just wait maybe a minute for people to catch up. Yeah, but basically, yeah, what we've done is uh, remind you guys what the if statement does and introduce the input function, which you can use to ask yourself questions. And yeah, and I have all these print statements explaining what all the options for the calculator, what the calculator we're making can do. And down here, which is the last thing we did, um, we have numbers one, number one, and number two, which are the two numbers that we are doing stuff to. Like whether we're adding or subtracting or whatever. All right, um, so we need to actually start being able to like give answers depending on which option they pick. So say, um, the answer if it was addition would be like just num one plus num two, and then you could just print the answer. But because we can pick like many, different operations like four different operations you need to have a big if statement based on whatever like option they chose right so 
So okay. So we have um, so we need to have an if statement based on the operator. So we're going to say if um, operation equals remember for checking if stuff is equal to something, we use this double equal sign, which means check if it's equal to. Single equal sign in Python means like make this equal to, like that's called the assignment statement. Anyway, um, so if operation is equal to um, one, that's addition, right? So the answer would be answer equals um, whatever num one plus num two is. Right, uh, yeah. So just like, uh, yeah, raise your hand in like Zoom if like you wanna have a go at completing the rest of this if statement. No one so far? Okay, I'll go on them. But basically, yeah, we need an, now we have if and else if, else if um, is like shortened to elif in Python. But um, yeah, we need like an else if or elif for like every operation and we have four operations. So the first if is operation equals one. So the second one is an operation equals two. Um, our second operation is subtraction. So the answer is just um, num, num one minus num two. And then kind of just the same for all the other ones. So we have like else if operation is equal to three, the answer is um, we're doing multiplication, right? For num one times num two. And remember times in Python is just the asterisk here, it's not an X or anything. You can't do this, you have to do this. Oops. Um, and then else if um, operation equals four, then that is division. So we have answer equals num one divided by num two. And remember, um, when we are dividing, we use the slash sign. Okay, and if um, also if the user didn't pick any of these, so remember the else statement is the else part of the if statement is there to catch anything, but like uh, if it didn't match any of these conditions in any of the if or else ifs, if it wasn't one or two or three or four, then it will go to the else. So that means, ah, sorry, it's a bit, might be a bit lost. <laughs> okay. Where are people up to? Anyone's still trying to write the if statement? You don't need to actually type this if statement. I was just kind of reminding everybody of like how if statements work. Because we kind of did this one in the last lesson as well. Uh, if uh, if while you're typing this, you're getting any errors in Python or whatever, just uh, raise your hand in Zoom and I can look at your code and see if you've made a mistake.
Uh, just let me go and like shadow or whatever for you. Oh, someone has a question. Hi, uh, Jenny. Um, it's not affected my code so far, but there's this weird green line right in the middle of my code. Green line. Okay. Normally, most errors are like red lines, so I'm not sure what a green yeah, but, line means. No, it's a green line in the middle. Okay. Um, does it run properly? Like I am a calculator. It runs perfectly fine. It's just that it's weird. Happened after I had to reset because it glitched. Okay. Okay. I'm not really sure what a green line means. I don't remember if I ever got one. If your code runs fine, that's probably okay. So far. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, anyway, uh, let me know if you have any more problems with the editor, but uh, if it runs okay, it's probably still fine. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well. All right, just let me know in chat if you need me to scroll down a bit. Yeah, you probably don't need to see this if statement anyway. Um, but yeah, we're up to here. All right, uh, can you give me a thumbs up if you've already if you've already um, copied most of this. No. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple minutes then. Yeah, uh, and around the inputs for all numbers, I'm sure you have like this int function just to convert it to a number. Otherwise, you need to like you'll need to end up quoting all the numbers down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just let me know if you're stuck on anything or if um, your code doesn't run properly. Hello, uh, Ellis. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, I done everything correct, but um, it's not working. Okay. Um, are you oh, are you coding on the same device you're using for Zoom? Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe share your screen, and I can have a look. Um, one second. Let me just stop sharing mine so you can show yours. Um, okay, try sharing your screen now and I can have a look at your code. It's the big share button, it's a green, in Zoom it's like green and it says share screen. Okay. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, can you like make the uh, the window bigger? I can I can see your code. It's just very squished. Like this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I press play, um, it doesn't really work. Oh, it doesn't print everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just does that. Oh, okay. I think you need to. So you know how you know in Scratch, like the ask block is to like ask you a question. So it's stopping at the first input function. Your know, input. What, what is your name? That is because you need to actually type in your name and give it an answer. So you click. You click on the space after what is your name. See, there's a big rectangle after what is your name. Just click on it, and then like actually type in your name or something. Yeah, or just type in anything and then press and press return. So I just type in my name. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, click on that. Uh, does that work? I think you need to press run again because it just stopped. Yep. So yep, just type in your name. Okay, cool. Press return. Yep. Now it prints the rest. So yeah, whenever you have an input function, it basically asks you a question in the console, and you actually have to like click on it and type, like type an answer. That's why it stops there. But yeah, it did print the rest just then. Yeah, cool. Um, if you get annoyed with it, like asking your name every single time, you can delete those lines as well. Like if you just want to focus on the calculator. But yeah, whenever you have input, you need to type something in response and press enter. But, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, cool. yeah, you notice whenever I run my code, I actually um, end up like typing stuff here every single time. Hey, Kinda. Hello. Hello. Um, I need help with something because I'm I'm on like num on the question four. It's underlined in red. In like in that like line four, it's underlined red. Like line four, like. In, are you still up to the F statement or? Oh well, no, I'm on. No, I'm up to um thirty, but on number four it. Okay. Um. um all right. I will have a look at your code. Um. Yeah. Just show your screen. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, you have a red underline there. Um, oh, you know how I said with if statements, you need like the indent, which is like the, um, so, which is like the space, like the couple of spaces before like the line under the if. So um, just like um, put your cursor, like click on the, the before the P in print on my four. Like just click on the start of the line. That? Yeah. Uh, sort of. Yeah, the, um, yeah. Uh, press enter now once. Yeah, see how like automatically it puts spaces there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, you have one more error now as well. Just scroll back up. So now you have another underline. Um, you forgot to put the colon after the three. You know, the two, the two dots, just put a colon there. What's that? Uh, you know, like the two dots, one above the other, like you have after the two. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and then um, click on at the beginning of like line six, like the beginning of it, and then press tab on the keyboard. Press tab. Yep, there you go. See, see how when you press tab, yeah. it choose out the spaces yeah. and do that with line eight as well. Press tab once. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Um, yeah, I may have mentioned this before, but every time you have like 
an if statement or like a for loop or a while loop or anything that like has a, you know, this, this colon here. Uh, the next line after it always needs to be indented. Indented means like um, you have like a space or set of spaces of a certain width. So if I press enter like immediately after this, it will automatically put the right number of spaces in. Like if I just did this. But if you need, if you accidentally unindented and you need to sort of do it manually, um, you just um, you just press tab. Like you put your cursor here and like at the beginning of it, and then you press tab. That should indent it by like by one. Yeah. Python is very finicky about indents. So whenever you have an if statement or whatever, you need to have like this tab space here. And same with like the if statement down here. A big if statement, like everything under a colon needs to be indented by like one sort of tab space. So under this if, under every else if and stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's a kind of the way that Python, like um, that um, in Python, you show like um, what code is part of another code block. So you know how like in Scratch, you, you know, if you have like an if statement in Scratch, you just like drag and drop like blocks in this like big kind of um, structure and they have like gaps to fit them in. Um, yeah, with Python, like the way you show that there's a structure there is like these tab spaces, like indents. Okay, I'll give you like one or two more minutes so you can get up to this big if block. But yeah, remember what I said about columns here and indents. Um, the code editor will automatically put in an indent if you press like enter after making a colon, but if it doesn't just add the tab spaces yourself. Oh, and the opposite of indenting, by the way, is like, Unindenting. So if you want to do the opposite of an indent, you press you hold shift and then press tab like this. Of course, now if I do this, there's a big red underline. And if I hover over it, it will say expected an indented block. Because Python hates it when you've made a colon, but you haven't indented the block underneath it. So I'm gonna indent that again. Okay, uh, just give me a thumbs up and zoom if you've like already gotten down to here, like the end. Okay, not many of you. Let's take a while to type out all this stuff. It's like part of the, yeah, why scratch is so easy for beginners. You can just uh, drag and drop blocks and you don't need to do like lots and lots of typing. <laughs>
Well, anyway, um, at the end of the if statement, like the last, the only like last thing you need to write is like you need to print what the answer is. So remember, after the if statement, you have to unindent. So after pressing like enter here, so it automatically indents like some phrases for you. You need to like unindent. So you need to like press backspace to get out of there, and then then I got. You don't have any more spaces here. And now you can just print whatever and be like answer equals and then write just answer. Uh, I don't know if you're still typing, but um, I'll just show you what this looks like. Uh, I know this is all we need to type. This is like the whole um, calculator program. Like I mean, we already have our answer down here. Yeah, that's 36 lines. All right, if you're still typing, I'll just show you how the calculator actually works. We're gonna, um, yeah, so we have an operation. You can kind of delete the what is your name if it's annoying you to have you type your name the whole time because it's not really part of the calculator. Um, okay, hi Jenny. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I was able to write down all of it so far. I was just able to, and then I ran the code. I think we'll figure, we'll do it a bit later on, um, because the it's not really working. Like I did one, and I did plus, and then I did one plus one, and it came up as the whole code finished. So we're gonna do that later, right? Uh, so after this whole if statement, then like you just print like answer equals, and then whatever the answer is. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. I yeah, I just wrote that just now. Literally just like, yeah, less than a minute ago. But yeah, so once you have the answer, you actually need to print what it is. So yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. In Python, you can have a variable, but uh, you need to actually print it out in order to see it. I can do. For mine, when I um click run or the um play button, it, the only thing it shows up in the console is X is two, and after that, what is your name? Question mark. I think I mentioned this before, but every time you run it, you need to answer all the questions. Like you need to actually type in your name or even just letters. Like once you click here, type an answer, it should write the rest of the stuff. And then again, it'll stop at every single question. So oh, okay. pick an operation is also a question. So just give it a number, press enter, and then you need to, and then it'll stop and say, choose this. You need to give it some number. You need to give this a number. And then, yeah, then it'll give the answer. Oh, so okay. just make sure you answer all of your questions here. Cool. But yeah, basically what you get is, uh, yeah. So if you pick operation number one, that's addition and your two numbers, it should just add them together and give you the answer. So I chose operation number, uh, operation one, which is addition. And then I gave it numbers eight and nine. Eight plus nine is 17, that's correct. Yeah. I'm a bit annoyed with this keeping asking me my name. So I'm just gonna comment this up uh, just to, so I don't need to keep typing my name every time. Uh, you can keep this here if you like. It's just it's not part of the calculator. Um, so I'll just test it with some other numbers. So I'll just choose I don't know, ten and fifty-three. Uh, ten plus fifty-three is sixty-three. Uh, yep, the answer is sixty-three. You can also do it with like a bunch of other um, operations. I'll just use subtraction. Let's say. Five and seven, and yeah, that's correct. So if you if you do like five minus seven, the answer is actually minus two. 
If you do it the other way around, the answer would be five. So if we do operation two is subtraction. If you choose seven and then five, seven minus five is plus two. Uh, yeah, while you finish typing all that, I'm just going to try out some other operations. So I'm going to do division, so that's number four. Um, I'm going to just like, I'm interested to see what it does when, like, for stuff that doesn't cleanly divide. So if you do like three divided by two, you get 1.5. So it does, um, it also does like not whole numbers as well. So three divided by two is one and a half. If you clean division, like 10 divided by two is five. Okay, uh, hi Eric. I made the number for the calculator too big and then it just wouldn't work. Oh, too big, uh, what, what did it do? It just said a uh, syntax error, but I didn't type it wrong. Okay, like how big was your number? Well, bigger than a million, I think. I think it should be able to take um, lots of numbers, let's see. Choose your first number. If I do nine, 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 uh, what's it do? Uh, it's actually fine with pretty big numbers. But mine just went in tax error. Okay. I might have typed something wrong over around 23. All right. Um, I can actually have a look at your screen just to see if you haven't made any code errors. Oh, syntax I, error. see. I see where I got it. Oh, you I forgot it. I forgot to type this number here. Okay. Uh, let me know if you still have any problems. So I'll just I can look at your screen. But syntax error doesn't usually mean that you've <laughs> done something wrong with like what you've typed in the console. It usually means you have a problem with what you've typed in your code. Okay, I fixed it now. Now I can make it go. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, did you get working? <laughs> okay. Right. You may notice even if um, for division, even if you do like uh, whole numbers, like, you know, 10 divided by five, it always answers in a decimal. That's because I think by default, like um, it will always convert like the result of a division, even if like it's two whole numbers that evenly divide, it will always convert it to a decimal or a, in Python this is called a float number or floating point number. That's, I think they do that because most numbers don't really cleanly divide into each other. Like most of the time you will get like decimal numbers. I'll do one multiplication because I haven't done that yet. That's number three. One, two, three times five. Three and five. That's 15. Okay. Hi, Kendall. Uh, hello. Um, again, mine, when, um, uh, when I clicked run and I typed in um, when it said pick an operation, I typed in A, mm -hmm. and then it said um, choose your first number. I typed in eight again. Then it said choose your second number. I typed in seven, and then it sh and then when I clicked enter, some like red words came up. Uh, red words. Um, so you have an error. Did you pick like a what did you pick for your operation? Was it any um? For my operation, I picked eight. Oh, okay. I think that's the problem because um, we only have four operations here, see? Select an operation, we only have one, two, three, and four. So you can't really pick that for your operation. Oh, because, and, um, okay. yeah. I'll try doing that. Then I'll see. do three for my operation. I'll do two. Okay, so you have read these red words oh, so name error answer is not defined 
that's because I picked like an operation that was that like doesn't have an like matching thing in the if condition. So answer like there is no answer never gets assigned to anything if you pick eight. So it, it complains like what is answer? You never oh. like, made an answer. <laughs> yeah. And also when I type in um my name, it just shows up hi name. Oh yeah, that's normal. Um I just got rid of this because I was sick of typing my name over and over again. But um oh. yeah, that's fine. So if I put this back, it'll just do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, um cool you don't you don't have oh by the way um so we haven't really covered the condition of like what happens if you accidentally pick an operation that is not one of these four so you know how like um the else part of the if statement is used to catch anything that you know doesn't meet one of the conditions in the ifs or else ifs so you have else so else else um so if it hits this else that means that the operation is not one, not two, not three, and not four. So we have to be like, uh, I'm going to say error picks the bad operation number, basically, because if it hits this, it means you haven't given it like a number that is one, two, three, or four. So I will run this again with this extra thing. So I'll say I'll pick what Kinder just picked, which is eight. And I'm gonna do this. Yeah, error picked bad operation number. So at least it'll tell you what you've done wrong. Although it still complains here in this error message that answer isn't defined. So I'm gonna because obviously like you. Like you still haven't defined what answer is. Uh, so I'll just, you can assign answer to equal like an empty string. So do this and pick Kinder's uh, operation of eight, which doesn't exist. And it doesn't. Then it'll go to this error. It will continue to print this out, but since answer equals like just nothing, like a blank text, it'll just say this. <laughs> right. yeah. You don't need to print this if you don't want to. This is just useful for catching the case if, um, like, if someone picks an operation number which isn't one of these four. <laughs> That's all. Oops. Okay, uh, for anyone who's still typing, uh, something if you need me to scroll up or down. Oh, yeah, this is a full calculator. Uh, if for whatever reason you wanted to be more advanced, you could actually use like a while loop that like refuses to keep going unless like the user has typed in a valid number. Like if they accidentally pick eight, it'll like keep asking them until they pick one of the four numbers. But um, yeah, that's uh, so you could do that. Okay, um, we only have a few minutes left. Does anyone have, have any more questions for me before the end of the lesson?
Uh, don't worry if you didn't like it through all of this. Um, all our lectures have recordings. So if you have any issues like understanding stuff or just, uh, yeah, ask me. Yeah, only about one minute to go. I think Rosie asked me oh, if there's a way to move the error line so it shows when the operation is chosen. Uh, yes, you could just, uh, like you could move, like you could put another if statement that checks the operation number like up here. So you could be like, if operation is not one, two, three, or four, then print this. But you need like another if statement like up here, basically. We can do this ask how we how do we save the code? It should save like automatically. The only reason like every few minutes. The only reason it wouldn't save, I think, is like if you have a bad internet connection. If you think you have a bad internet connection, just like highlight everything and press like copy. Just so you have it sort of saved to your like um what clipboard so you can paste it back in again when you refresh the page. But yeah. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Um, yeah, but hope you guys enjoyed this course. This is the last lesson of the junior coding course. Hope you guys enjoyed learning uh, Scratch and Python. Bye. 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 Bye.